Okay. All right, thanks, Deb. Um, my name is Steve Hilberg. I'm the director of the Midwestern Regional Climate Center, which is uh, over on the University of Illinois campus, about 70 miles from here. Um, the regional, real briefly, the region, there are six regional climate centers in the country, and they're funded by NOAA, and uh, have been exist in existence for over 20 years now, and in some cases a well-kept secret. But um, one of the, the missions of the climate centers are to uh, collect and disseminate climate and weather data and products and information, uh, monitoring of our climate in our region, and also with uh, applied research, applied climate research. Uh, this is, I'm gonna talk a little bit about one of our uh, uh, monitoring products. We do, uh, we've developed quite a, um, a, a good, I think, um, online uh, monitoring tool for the Midwest that covers just about everything that happens uh, weather-wise. Um, it's called the Midwest Climate Watch. And uh, it was, we've probably had this going now for about 10, 11 years. And it really is sort of a one-stop shop for checking out what's going on in the Midwest in terms of, of the weather. Uh, it's pretty much all automated so that everything's updated each day, sometimes twice a day, depending on the product. And we also write a uh, weekly narrative that describes the weather and climate highlights in the region. And that's just a quick look at uh, that's not the entire page, but that's most of it. And there's a lot of information on there, but most of it's uh, very quickly accessible within one click. And uh, you can see everything from uh, last yesterday's precipitation to yesterday's highs and uh, just about anything else you want to know, growing degree days. Uh, but one of the other, uh, we also have links to the states, individual states, where they all have similar type maps. And so you can get drill down to the state level as well. But one of the specialized pages we have, and what I'm going to talk about, is our uh, Midwest drought information. And this is really a collection of maps and other products that, uh, again, give you a sort of a quick overview of what's happening in the Midwest. Um, but what, we are, what we're using this as is a link between the national overview and down to what would be a local overview uh, or local impacts. Uh, we're not trying to uh, give the details of what's going on in the entire region, but at least give you a quick snapshot and then you can select to go, for example, if there is drought in Indiana, which there is not right now. Um, uh, if we were doing this about eight months ago, we'd probably be able to talk about that a little bit, but um, uh, you could drill down and, and go to impacts in Indiana, what the water resources are doing, where there are restrictions. Uh, if there were any disaster areas being uh, declared because of agriculture, for example. And uh, so you can, we are sort of the link between the national map and, and the national drought monitor and, and down to the local level. And local states, local states, the states each have different aspects of this. Uh, this is the iClimate page. If you go to Missouri, there's two or three pages they have. Uh, not just the State Climate Office, but their Department of uh, Natural Resources has a specialized drought page, and we link to those from our website. So this is the overview of the page and what it looks like. Uh, we feature the Midwest portion of the U.S. Drought Monitor, and if you click on the U.S. Drought Monitor on any one of the states in our region, you get this map. And it gives you more detail on the nine states that are included in our Midwest region, and I believe, unless things change, those, all those regional maps off the drought monitor correspond to the regional climate center regions in the U.S. And then we have uh, thumbnails of various maps, uh, which I'll go through a little bit more detail as we go through. And then up in the top right there, you can actually click on uh, whatever state you're interested in and go see what's uh, going on in that particular state. So the drought monitor in the Midwest region, and this is a quick overview of what's going on in the Midwest. As you can see right now, as of last uh, Tuesday, not much. Uh, some dryness still in the uh, Minnesota Arrowhead and in the Keweenaw Peninsula in Upper Michigan. Uh, if we were doing this again about a year ago, uh, there was a lot of drought in the Ohio Valley, southern Indiana. Um, not the case now. And typically in the Midwest, it's either feast or famine. And right now it's uh, we're gorging ourselves on rain, basically. Uh, so this is automatically updated every Thursday morning. As soon as it's available from the Drought Mitigation Center, it's up on our website. We have precipitation maps. These are automatically updated every day. 
and uh, for 30, 90, and 180 day periods, so you can get a quick overview of what the relatively short and long-term precipitation trends are. Uh, as you know, in, in the Midwest, agriculture is probably the first thing impacted by drought, and uh, especially if it occurs in the spring and early summer, or any time during the summer. Uh, wintertime dryness, typically not a big issue here unless it persists, but uh, so agriculture is one of the prime drivers of what we look at. And then beyond that, if it persists long enough, then we get into water supplies in many areas and stream flows. So you can look at the long-term precipitation. And we have these maps, not only the actual precipitation, but the percent of normal or, or the departure from normal. And that's a close-up view. That's the uh, percent of normal precipitation from March through last Friday. And as you can see, everywhere from southern Missouri through the Ohio Valley, southern Indiana, uh, much of the Midwest, much of the lower Midwest is all well above normal, and there's actually very few areas that even have been below normal for the last uh, uh, three months. So it gives you a quick overview, and then you can go down and look at individual states or individual stations if you wanted to. One of our newer products that actually came online this spring is county level modeled soil moisture. And this is a model that uh, one of our researchers has been working on for a while. Uh, we did, have, we did have a different way of presenting this in the past, but we have now uh, got it down to where we are. you can look at individual counties, and we have three levels from the surface to four inches. Uh, that's primary interest of agriculture, uh, especially during planting season, uh, zero to 20 and zero to 72. So you get a profile of what the soil moisture looks like um, uh, through the soil down to six feet. That's the map uh, as of last uh, Thursday, and you can see where it is dry in the upper layers of the soil, and some of that's a reflection of the actual soil itself. So where you have particularly sandy soils, it doesn't hold moisture that readily, and you'll see, um, you see, bigger, discrep you'll see bigger differences on this map than you would, let's say, on the zero to 72. Uh, one of the problems, not problems, but one of the restrictions with this map is we do use um, the multi, what it's called the multi-sensor precipitation estimate from the National Weather Service, which combines rain gauge and radar data. And where radar coverage is, uh, where you're on the fringes of the radar coverage, it will underestimate precipitation. And you can sometimes see that in the uh, county soil moisture maps. But generally, it's a very good representation of what's going down uh, in each particular state and county. We also have the Palmer drought indices. Um, including PDSI, uh, the Crop Moisture Index, uh, again, very uh, uh, of primary interest here in the Midwest, especially during the growing season. And this basically indicates whether soils have enough moisture to meet the short-term needs of crops in the region. And you can see that a uh, good part of Iowa, northern Illinois, and even northeastern Indiana, as of last week, uh, have uh, quite a bit of moisture there. Uh, we have the Palmer Drought Severity Index, PDSI, and then also a corresponding map, the precipitation needed to bring that up to zero. And uh, of course, Texas is standing out uh, very big in that particular map, national map. Um, the Z index uh, represents the change in soil moisture conditions over the last month and uh, is another map we have available. And these we generally pull from, uh, I believe, uh, NCDC off their website. And then the standardized precipitation index for six months. That's the only SPI map we have at this point. But it's, uh, it allows you to uh, compare uh, precipitation across time and space and it normal, tends to normalize things somewhat and you can watch that as, we, uh, as you go through a season. These are also available, I think, down to one month, uh, three months, six months, um, out all sorts of time frames. Uh, we use the six month uh, in, here in the Midwest, at least at our center. Again, stream flow gets to be very important, uh, especially if we are in a drought, so we have a link to the uh, USGS website. Generally, if you click on these maps too, you can, go, you can also access the websites uh, for these respective agencies, and we pr provide a snapshot of the uh, stream flow across the US. Um, and then the outlooks. Uh, we don't do forecasting, we don't do outlooks at the Climate Center, but we do provide access to those, and those that one on the uh, uh, left there is the seasonal drought outlook issued by the Climate Prediction Center in uh, uh, 
and NOAA, and then the other two are the uh, 30 and 90 day precipitation outlooks issued by the Climate Prediction Center. And then we have a link to NIDIS and, uh, and the drought portal, uh, which gives you even more information and you can drill down and uh, get more information going through NIDIS. So we try, what we try and do is um, cover the continuum between the national outlook and, and the local perspectives on drought. And um, we're not trying to be, uh, provide a lot of detail, but it's a good spot to go and, and get, quick, get a quick assessment of what's going on. Um, during drought, which we haven't had now for a while, uh, the page gets hit quite a bit because it, it does provide a quick overview and then we uh, provide the links that uh, folks can go to to even drill down even further. So um, with that, I'm going to get you back on schedule. Quick overview. If anybody has any questions, I'll be happy to take them. Well, uh, we could do that. I mean, we have, you know, we've supplied some of the maps already that uh, the states use. So uh, p pulling part of this into a, a state perspective would not be difficult. It's all, it's all there. It's just a matter of porting it and figuring out how you want to, how you want to present it. You're very glad to hear that because we've already done it. You haven't made it public, but we want to talk to you about it. Okay, great. It'd be much more exciting if there's actually drought happening in the Midwest, but there isn't. Any other questions for any of the other speakers? Yes. The soil moisture? Uh, the soil moisture and the Well, most of the, the soil moisture is really the only county level. Well, if you look at precipitation, the, the estimate, the multi-sensor precipitation, we do have a county map. Uh, I mean, all the counties are on there. That's a, uh, what is the resolution on that, Doug? Uh, less than a kilometer, right? Uh, I forget. It, it's pretty small. But it, it get, so that is very, um, that's a pretty good product. You can get down into a finer scale. We don't have any way to magnify that so you can zoom in right now. So you can only look at a county. But within a county, you could see uh, variations in precipitation and you could probably figure it out. Uh, if you could zoom in a little bit, but it's a the multi-sensor precipitation product is very good because it combines the radar, it, it corrects the radar for for rain gauge estimate for rain gauge measurements. So you get both, and I think they're also including not only the co-op stations now, but all the Cocoraz uh, rainfall measurements, which gives you a, a, a very fine ground truth uh, as far as precipitation is concerned. The gauges correct radar. Right, right. Gauges correct radar. Yeah, the MPE st stuff has uh, 10 years maybe, where, maybe. and it hasn't even been, it hasn't been online that long, they've been generating it that, but we've been working with some of that data for about 10 years. 